Our Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off coverage continues with a longtime rivalry game featuring two high-powered teams that are almost always in the postseason conversation. It's the De La Salle Islanders and Minnehaha Academy Red Hawks. And for our last couple of games, we are joined by Pat Barrett, one of my NSPN colleagues and a member of the Miss Basketball Minnesota Committee. Pat, you've been around. You've seen a lot of games. You were checking out some of the action yesterday. Anytime these two teams meet, uh, there is a whole lot of talent on the floor. I uh, do PA work also, Mike, out at Fridley, so I see De La Salle. I thought they had a really nice young team last year, and I would expect really good things from them. And you can watch Minnehaha and see Addie Mack, and you go, there's no way that girl can dominate the game, and she only had 37 yesterday, so. Which I understand for the moment, was enough to lead the state in scoring. <laughs> She'll be in that discussion by the time this is done, but you saw somebody at St. Thomas who might be in that discussion also. I saw a couple who might <laughs> enter the fray in Salanoa and Apinga, and of course, Matt and Greenway had 36 yesterday. Uh, that Providence Minnehaha series, always a conference rivalry to circle on the calendar, but how about Addie Mack? She is on pace to get to 3,000 points this year. I believe the third fastest to 2,000, and it, it's just incredible. She is part of that young crop of talent herself, Orline and Greenway, who have lit up scoreboards ever since they set foot on the floor in varsity. You know, Greenway does it as much with their athleticism as her skills. Addie Mack is just slick. <laughs> you watch her play, and you go, there's just no way she's going to be as successful as she is. She just has that high IQ for the game to go with the skills. Now, what are the big changes for Minnehaha this year? A new head coach, Damian Lohler, new staff, and it looked like for a time some folks from Minnehaha might move over. Ava Cupido did, but Amina Allen came back. So Minnehaha bringing back just about everybody from a year ago. How do you think that camaraderie will help in this transition? You know, I think any time you've got an experienced team together, it's going to make it easier on the head coach. And so I would expect they aren't going to miss much of a beat, maybe early on a little bit. But as the season goes on, they've got strong enough players and a strong enough tradition, they're going to be fine. And strong players they have in bunches. The starters for Minnehaha, Sine Hill, and Angel Hill. Sine, the niece of Angel. Addie Mack. Issa Griefenhagen moving into the starting spot as a freshman this year, and Amina Allen. De La Salle will start the point guard sensation, Anisha Scott. Maddie Blaylark had a terrific campaign a year ago. Ariana Maester, Dylan Tubbs, and Jordan Johnson, who committed to volleyball at UC Santa Barbara, but she's one heck of a post player as well. And Johnson, part of that young crop of kids that helped De La Salle stay competitive when there were some questions about their validity following Tanisha Scott's departure. These are two teams who make the state tournament just about every year. Should be a fun game, Mike. De La Salle and Minnehaha coming off runaway wins. De La Salle beating Orno. Minnehaha knocking off Edina. And the schedules for these two uh, filled with some top contenders. De La Salle, they'll be in the Anoka Ramsey Hall of Fame Classic. Minnehaha, they get both Crosby, Ironton, Duluth, Marshall with the up-and-comer in Chloe Johnson. Speaking of young guns. And, of course, the conference series with Providence Academy. The last meeting between the two set all kinds of records. There's Addie Mack for three. I still can't wrap my head around that, Pat. Last year, Providence and Minnehaha, their second meeting, 126-94. I have nothing like a good pitcher's duel, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, but if you consider yeah. Addie Mack and Maddie Greenway pitchers, they both set single game school scoring records in that one. Addie Mack with the steal on Scott. She's got a lane, but Scott able to disrupt. Here's Maddie Blaylark. Scott steps into the three. It's long. Angel Hill with the rebound. Another thing for Minnehaha that really hampered them last year, they had a lot of health and injury issues. If they can avoid that this year, that should open up some opportunities. Minnehaha 
Made it to the semis last year. Last two years, actually. Won bronze two years ago. And I talked to a couple of the parents as Angel Hill goes to the line. I guess they were a little miffed that folks were thinking, oh, maybe Minnehaha's falling behind here. It's hard to say. Providence will be the favorite to win in 2A, but Minnehaha, if they can get these pieces working together, they should pose a challenge. They were in the Final Four last year. I'd be shocked if they don't get back there again. And Albany returns their two best players, too. So those are the top three in my mind right off the bat. Angel Hill knocks down both free throws. She is the youngest of the Hill sisters. Addie Mack times the pass. She'll try it again. Uses the Hezzy move. Scott keeping her in check so far. Addie Mack gets another rebound. Allen for three. Anisha Scott again. Anisha has really upped her stock over the last couple of years, and she recently signed an NIL deal. Here she comes. Her take is offline. Griefenhagen couldn't control the rebound, and Scott flips it in. Said, DSL is probably a little more athletic, top to bottom, than Minnehaha is going to be, and that'll be the interesting challenge of the game. When you look at their list of athletes, I know Anisha Scott did some track. Here's a backdoor cut for Sine Hill. Sine started at Washburn, then Southwest, and has since moved to Minnehaha. The eldest offspring of PJ. Here's Jordan Johnson. Nothing there, Dylan Tubbs, no. Gets a second try and puts it in. Here comes Addie Mack on the scoop, still looking for her first bucket. She will go to the free throw line. To your point, Pat, about De La South athleticism, you look at their roster, Jordan Johnson, she's a D1 volleyball commit. Maester, Scott, they all take up multiple sports. They've got athletes, there's no doubt about it. And Minnehaha has a couple of those as well. Issa Griefenhagen and Sine Hill both taking up soccer this year. Sine in her second year. So two falls early on Meester. She has to step out. And that could hurt De La Salle's interior. But again, they've got athletes. Inbound, picked up by Mack. Long skip, tipped by Blaylark. Timeout, Minnehaha. Remember, with the shot clock, Pat, I don't need to tell him this, but in case any of you are tuning in for the first time, there is no more five-second rule with the shot clock in play. There, there is still if it's a held ball, but not okay. dribbling. You can dribble all you want, but that is a five-second call in the front court with a held ball. Well, thank you for the clarification. I know everyone's still trying to get up to speed. The biggest thing that surprised me with the shot clock is how they mirror the college rules, so they go to 20 on an offensive rebound. In past years when we covered events, it was the full 35 that used it, so that does change the dynamic a bit. You know, we had that discussion with the State High School League and the liaison for girls basketball coaches and work in conjunction with the boys, and we thought that made the most sense and they agreed with us, so. It does add another element that everyone will get used to. I said, I don't think it comes into play much, Mike, in regular season games that much. Where you'll see it affect is postseason play when you're always on a college floor or a, or the you know Timberwolves floor if we get to right. that place. Longer, That's longer where you're court, gonna see right. That's where you're going to see Well, the girls' tournament, they play those both at the PAV and Williams consolation games at Concordia. And I've noticed this with White Bear Lake Centennial. Here's a high-low. Jordan Johnson got a step underneath. You want to know something crazy, Pat? I was, hear, I was hearing rumors at STA that Jordan wasn't going to play basketball. One of my other colleagues, Eric Bugard, came by, asked uh, James Fassett, the head coach, about that, and he said, no, Jordan's still playing. I think it's healthy to continue to play multiple sports. And you I look at how well she can dominate. I think it makes sense for her to keep playing. That's 
Well, just from an athletic standpoint and keeping your body in shape, it isn't the overuse of using the same muscles all the time the same way. Elbow J for Blaylark is long. He lists out with a 6-4 lead over Minnehaha. Addie Mack, got it. You can try your best, but at some point, it's only a matter of time before Addie Mack finds a way to scoop it in. Now they've bothered her on a few of her shots already, but said she's slick. She'll figure out ways to get her points. Here's Scott. Right back at you, Scott says. And Anisha, no stranger to big time environments. Here's an outlet pass. Griffin Hagen scoop a little too strong. Scott, I did a game a couple years ago against Mankato East. She hit some clutch free throws at the end to win it for the Islanders on that Saturday evening. Here she is on the spin cycle, short on the bunny. Tubbs takes it away from Griefenhagen. Those are buckets you really want to have. Mack lost it to Scott. Griefenhagen swats it away. Pat, I'm really mesmerized by this point guard battle we've got between Addie Mack and Anisha Scott. They're not leaving anything behind. It'll be a great battle between two good young guards. It's always interesting coming over here, Mike. This is our first year of technically using the shot clock. In I've full. watched usually a game or a game and a half before I even notice the shot clock. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how much it comes into play in a typical game for us. We did have one violation a little while ago, but I haven't seen a ton of shot clock issues. And I think in part, a lot of these players, De La Salle, White Bear Lake, as Addie Max steps into the three, comes up short. Lakeville, South Minnetonka, they played in this event, so they already had a little experience with the clock, and the Lake Conference put it in the shot clock last year. For sure had to help those teams. So the Lake Conference is probably going to have a step ahead of everybody. They but. were a step ahead of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think. Podium sweep last year in 4A. Mm -hmm. They could do it again this year. De La Salle, they draw a bump. That's Taylor Starks, number 10. Jump ball, I think he called. Oh, that's right, jump ball. That's why I have you here. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have kept on going, and viewers would be wondering, what's up with him? Maya McNeil, inside. Some strong defense there by the Red Hawks. Belen Samuels, number 32. Pat, the number of times we see this pinball-like change in possessions, one team gets a steal, then the other one suits back in. It is still early season, so you're gonna see some of that always in early games. That we're just not quite up to snuff, either conditioning-wise or play-wise. So sometimes the pressure that you see effective in early season games, by Christmas time, that doesn't work anymore. I know there's a lot more reps now between AAU and elsewhere. Mack with far to shoot. Can't sneak it underneath. Offensive rebound, shot clock goes to 20. That's Caroline Sonstegard. Angel Hill on the take. Sonstegard with two De La Salle players on top of her, draws the foul. The other thing you see here, when you get on these college and pro courts, they have the different three-point lines. It's yes. always interesting to see where the three-point shooters set themselves up because it seems logical to set up at what is the farthest out line. I where... saw a little bit of that in the White Bear Lake Centennial game, and when you're relying on peripheral vision, I think your instinct goes to whatever the first line you see is. No doubt. I know at the state tournament that always comes into play at Williams and the Pavilion. You see players who are shooting it, and it's almost always short when you're shooting that much farther out. Well, Addie Max got range. To me, it seems like less of an issue. It still is, but as more players like Mac, Greenway, Sarah Scali of a few years ago developed that range. Long time ago, I had a chance to see legendary coach Ziggy calls, and he said, teach your kids to shoot 
a step or two outside the three-point line because they aren't going to guard you there. They're going to guard to the line. And I think that's what you see with the likes of Sarah Skelia. Nobody guarded her out that far because you think, oh, gosh, we'll let her have that. And that was a mistake. Of course, you don't have to worry about three-point shooting when you've got the interior presence of Johnson, who scored on the last bucket and then comes up with a block on Hill. Pat, I want to know who started this rumor about Jordan Johnson not playing basketball because you can understand if she wasn't going to go D1 for volleyball, I think a basketball school or two might have picked her up. Somebody who didn't want her playing in De La Salle probably started the rumor. <laughs> Check their schedule. <laughs> okay, well, they, yeah, they play some high level. I think they got Alexandria next week at the tip-off classic. I think you're covering that one. I am. For sure, should be a great Maybe game. Maybe with someone from there. No, you I'm never kidding. Know. <laughs> Backdoor play. I think it's anyone who plays them doesn't want her out there. <laughs> Dylan Tubbs follows her own miss. She's up to four. De La Salle getting the early advantage, 12-6. Benson from Mack. Three offline. Jordan Johnson with the rebound. It's two fouls on her, Mike. And now a decision to make for James Fassett with how brilliant she has been in the interior. Do you wonder, Pat, if uh, opponents of Minnehaha try to say something about Addie Mack and say, oh, she's not going to come back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bet there's a lot of her opponents that want to say that. <laughs> Timeout with 10 08 left, 12 6 to score. I know you had a chance to see some games at St. Thomas Academy, and you'll be all over the place between your announcing work, your Miss Basketball work. And you and I, we're going to be on different courts, but we'll be together at the Tip-Off Classic. I'm usually there anyway. I'm always there as the chairperson so for Miss Minnesota. Might as well make a few extra dollars. No, it is a good way to see a it lot of teams. It seemed like a logical fit for me. It was going to be there anyway. Those are the games I wanted to watch, so and, I'm excited for what it. What I enjoy most, too, over the years, they usually can get a good out-of-state team. I know Hortonville will play Providence Academy in the later stages, and... Hopkins and Lakeville North, they were on a little bit of a summer rivalry. They'll get to play round three. The breakdown people really do an outstanding job now setting up their tournaments around the state. There's six or seven of them going on, and there are great matchups, north and south, metro and outstate, all over the place, different classes playing, but they, they know how to spot the talented teams and get them together. And, you know, it used to be the complaint was we can't legitimately see the team from Roseau against the team from Goodhue. Well, now between all the streaming services and the ability of breakdown to bring those teams together, you would know for sure who the best teams are by the time we get to state. Well, Roseville, they played a couple of smaller schools. They made an impression taking Mountain Iron Buell to task. I think Mark Hook over at Maple Grove is probably not that disappointed they moved to a different section this year. Probably not. Minnehaha with the ball, five to shoot after the timeout. Sine Hill looking for space, puts it up. That didn't touch rim, shot clock violation. As my coach's brain works, if I was coaching against the shot clock, I'd do all sorts of soft pressing stuff leading into the half court, and I'd make sure I knew where the likes of Addie Mack or Jordan Johnson were. And if it was coming to their side, I'd double-team them and make somebody else have to make the play. Illegal screen on De La Salle. That will hand the ball back to Minnehaha. And Sine Hill, one of those glue players last year, part of that Hill family. She's the eldest daughter of PJ. And Angel actually played against her aunt, Angel and Jade, when she was a seventh grader, split uh, the conference series that year. Now she tries to go back door, didn't quite feel the pass cleanly. Back to Allen. Amina, another player who really made use of her expanded minutes a year ago. Here comes Mack. Sets up the three, swish. Don't want to step behind the screen on her. Addie, a clever one.
She's also done swimming and golf in her time as an athlete. Scott drops it to McNeil. Her three off the front iron. That's Taylor Starks, and she walked. 8.44 to go in the first half, 12-9 the score. Between a pair of state tournament caliber teams, De La Salle, they've reached the quarterfinals, and how about this? They were leading the Delta St. Margaret's in both meetings last year, just couldn't quite close the deal. And Minnehaha, again, winning bronze in 22, getting back to the semifinals in 23. Angel Hill through traffic. Came up a bit strong. Meister almost lost it. You gotta be careful though with Addie Mack. She can sneak up and bite you if you're not looking. She just has such a high basketball IQ and sees the floor so well both offensively and defensively. You're right, she's already got a couple of steals and nearly had one there. Here's Scott. Trying to get a step on Mack. Banks in the runner. Scott with six. Mack. Another foul, and that's the last to give for De La Salle. And to continue on Mack, I remember covering her in a game as a seventh grader when she was leading her team in scoring at Blake. I had never seen that before. I figured out why she was such a talented player at an early age, and I want to say she almost ushered in this crop of seventh and eighth grade young guns who can jump in and make an instant impact. It wasn't too often you saw Metro kids playing seventh and eighth grade at that level, and now you're starting to see it all over the place. Tend to shoot for Mac. An acrobatic move came up short. Here's Scott again. Through the hole, kicks out. Blaylark, she can knock them down from long range. Speaking of youngsters, Blaylark is another one. Although she's a sophomore now, Addie Mack. Doing Addie Mack things, which is a lot. <laughs> but slashing and scoring, drawing contact among them. DOSL's controlled the tempo so far in this first half, but they're starting to get in some foul trouble. And it'll be interesting to see if those fouls catch up with them. Moisture's already on the bench with three. Jordan Johnson's got two. And Addie Mack has a three-point play. And that is going to be something to monitor as this game continues. Those are not just any old players for De La Salle. Those are two of the big names. And Jordan Johnson, you saw how she was tearing up the interior early. Without that presence, it creates some openings, I think, for Minnehaha. 17-12 our score. De La Salle still in front. Angel Hill steps into the three. And that was well outside the college three-point line. Right. Jump ball. Minnehaha with the arrow. And again, I think that peripheral vision. That I don't know if you can speak from experience as a player, but when you go to the college courts and you have those longer lines, and heaven forbid what you do at the Pentagon, <laughs> how, do you how do you react to that? I think you were saying earlier, teach your kids to shoot a step or two beyond it. If you learn to shoot a step or two beyond, you'll be used to a little longer shot, obviously. But it's one of those things, if I got a team to a college level floor, I would be working like heck to get them to shoot and find that line peripherally in, the, in their warm-up sessions. Amina Allen scoring for the Red Hawks. De La Salle in trouble and a foul on Hill against McNeil. 6.22 left in a battle of what used to be conference rivals back in the day. They were both in Tri-Metro. Those were the good old days. And then for a time, they revived the rivalry. The boys-girls doubleheader did that for a couple of years. The gyms were sold out. De La Salle's was. 
those are the kind of matchups everybody wants to see, you know? It's sad that those teams aren't in the same conference together. Here is a three for Tubbs. And it bounces out of bounds. And there was again, step outside the college three point line, gonna be short almost every time. Right, if you're not trained, as you were yep. saying earlier, again, your sharpshooters. I know Greenway has some deep range and a few others come to mind. Addy can hit threes too. They're accustomed to it. Those players have to learn that because defensively they're gonna be guarded so tough. That's where you might get your only good shots. It paid off for Caitlin Clark. I, I would say so. <laughs> Here is Sine Hill who bounces in the runner. And Pat, we've got a one point game now. I think that foul trouble for De La Salle allowing Minnehaha a pathway back in this. They've lost some of their interior defense with their big kids sitting on the bench and you can see it's affecting it on that play for sure. De La Salle with a smaller lineup. Elbow J missing the mark there was Layla Moses. The mini ha ha again, the conference rival with Providence. Those are two big games, and they get both Crosby, Ironton, and Duluth Marshall on the schedule. Chloe Johnson, I've never seen a, a kid that young, that polished. And Crosby, Ironton, I saw Tori Orline last year at a game against Holy Family. She's the real deal. Those are going to be two big non conference games. Uh, the, the state is full of young kids that are just outstanding. So. A lot of good basketball to be seen for sure. Traveling call. Addie Macca Jr. now, I, I'm still used to seeing her when she was young, like so young. <laughs> Almost an old lady now, huh? <laughs> uh, her parents might feel otherwise. <laughs> uh, probably. <laughs> yeah. Here comes Scott. When you need a bucket, when you need a big play, that is a young woman you can find. Anisha Scott, a junior too. Mack inside the lane, can't bounce it in. De La Salle calling timeout, 19-16, 429 left in the first. Well, Anisha Scott giving De La Salle a big boost. I know they're still in front, but in terms of momentum, that was a much helpful play for the Islanders. She's going to have to take over the last four and a half minutes here in the first half because their big kids are on the bench with fouls. But again, though, Anisha Scott, she uh, is accustomed to performing in the clutch. It really has built up her pedigree over the years and moved up to the Metro Stars in AAU. I've got a feeling Anisha Scott will be hearing a lot more about her over the next couple of years. She clearly looks like their floor leader. And she has fulfilled that role for quite a while. Likes to watch movies in her free time, also on the track team. Last year, averaged 16.8 points per game, five and a half rebounds. And for De La Salle, again, if they are able to finish more efficiently, they have been out St. Margaret's. Maybe not on the ropes, but they were in front in both those games. They had a big lead in the quarterfinals, couldn't sustain it. If they can find a way around that, I think they could play spoiler. A lot of folks picked Benilde St. Margaret's to win in 3A. I did as well, but I feel like the field is pretty open. It'll be interesting to see until Kendall McGee comes back what they're going to be like, because they'll certainly miss her presence early. Uh, if she returns this season, I know... Yep. The McGees are a little more cautious about her. They want to make sure she's cleared with her trainer before she returns. So we'll see if she comes back. But Benil St. Margaret's has a lot of pieces. Blaylark lost it. Scott, look out. Scott had the open three. I was a little worried about Blaylark, though. She's down on the floor. There's a lot of bodies down there. There's a pile up on I-94. And now Minnehaha goes to Allen. Scott to Blaylark. On the run, the Islanders are, and free throws coming. 
for Layla Moses, number 13. That's at least two on Hill. It is her second, and Minnehaha, they don't back down either, so I know last year they had players that would get into foul trouble quite a bit as a result. Moses at the line, scored six points. Johnson led the Islanders with 19. De La Salle beating Orno handily. The first trip to the line for the Islanders, and Moses knocks down both. Angel Hill pulls up, couldn't shake off Layla Moses, and De La Salle with a chance to extend this lead. I'm sure James Fassett over there would be really happy if he sees something off his bench, those kids stepping up, replacing the two bigs out of the game. It is the fun of good competition early in the season, seeing who you're gonna have that's gonna step in and make plays. Layla Moses offering herself as a candidate, drawing the foul and the bucket. Griefenhagen hit with a foul. And Moses, who scored six yesterday, but that was in a runaway game. This is a little different. And if I recall, Minnehaha trying to go transition. Allen will shoot two after Griefenhagen got her the ball. Amina Allen, she was all set to go to Hopkins and then decided to return to Minnehaha after the coaching change. 5'9 junior really turned things up last year. That's the second fall in Blaylark. And remember, Jordan Johnson and Ariana Maester already with two fouls. Blaylark will stay in there. And they'll have to be careful, Blaylark especially. Allen makes both free throws, 24-18. Long skip. Moses on Hill. Can't get the bounce that time. Sine Hill, that is. There's two of them. He'll have to be careful because she's got two falls. Mack with a transition dime to Allen. And Amina with a quick four points for the Red Hawks. If you're De La Salle, you want to get to that second half without any more foul trouble. And there's somebody as shifty and elusive as Scott is. Only five foot five, but embodying that new unit, the new identity. An impact player since her freshman year. Minnehaha did have two fouls to give. Both tails now have two fouls. Last year with Minnehaha, we'll see what this year brings, but it felt like every game was a battle of attrition. Minnehaha aggressive on defense, and that sometimes can get you caught in foul situations. But it can produce plays like that. Scott again. And now Moses. Oh my goodness. Pat, we are seeing a track meet of defensive proportions. You know, both teams, good basketball IQ, good hustle. A lot of great plays out here defensively for sure. Now, Pat, what would you do to prep for a new season? And I'll explain why I'm asking that question here. When a new season came along, how did you prep? To me, you've got three segments in the season that you look at. Before Christmas time, I'm looking at lots of kids, trying to give, especially my seniors, a chance. Back in the good old days when a lot of seniors played, give them their chance. After Christmas, usually is when the conference season would kick in. Allen, a nice bucket there. And at that point, then you try and settle in on your eight or nine players. And then when it got towards postseason, then you were really gearing in on who's the seven for sure that we're counting on. Offensive foul on Dylan Tubbs. Well, the reason I asked that question, Issa Griefenhagen, who went to the line, missed the front end. 
to prep for this season, she went back and watched film of herself. And every time, she proceeded to yell at the eighth grade version of herself, going, why would you do that? <laughs> You I know, thought it was it's something part of the learning process, <laughs> right. you know. For some people, that's good to look and see what was they doing wrong. I want to make sure I don't make those mistakes again. That's what great players do. Oh, and I'm sure everyone does it, but the way Issa went about it, I, it felt like something out of a Saturday Night Live sketch, <laughs> yelling at yourself. I mean, I go back and watch my own film of broadcasting, but typically I cringe. I don't yell at myself. Why didn't you come up with that verb or that adjective? I try not to yell at myself too much. Twenty-four, twenty-two. It's a tight one here. Scott hounded, and Mini Haha. I tell you what, Pat. It, the point guards in particular, Scott and Mac, neither of them can flinch the other. They are just unwavering, unfazed. They're probably somewhat familiar with each other. <laughs> they've seen each other before at the high school level. And they've probably met. Have, and they probably have faced each other in AAU. Angel Hill on the take. Griefenhagen tried to secure the rebound. Scott with numbers. Nice move. Another silky smooth runner. Anisha with 10. 45 seconds. Addie Mack draws a foul on Scott. And how many is that for Anisha? Just first one on her. But Meester already has three, Tubbs has three, Blaylark's got two, Johnson's got two. We'll see how this plays itself out in the second half. I'm betting we're gonna see some bench players again in the second half for De La Salle. Can they step up again? They still have the lead. Addie Mack knocks down the front end. Another thing she took up at an early age, playing the stock market. Her father works at an accounting firm, if I remember correctly, and uh, Addie's parents have shown her the ropes of stock trading. She's also participated in golf and swimming. Addie can do quite a bit. She makes both free throws to make it a two-point game again. We have a four-second difference, shot clock to game clock. Scott trying to spin off Mac. De La Salle biding their time. Moses back to Scott. Oh, nice find, but no bunny there for Taylor Starks. Mini Ha Ha with a chance to tie or take the lead. Is it Eddie Mac time? Scott got a piece of it. De La Salle, can they get it off in time? Not quite. What a first half though, Pat. 26-24, De La Salle in front. And two different storylines here heading into the second half. De La Salle has to manage a lot of foul trouble. Minnehaha has a couple with two as well, but I feel this might impact De La Salle's depth a little bit more. That's the piece that we're gonna watch in the second half. Is their depth gonna hold up right now? There's no doubt guard Scott has really dictated the play for them. Kept them in the lead the whole half. We'll see if they get in the same kind of fall trouble in the second half, and will she be able to do it again? The second half will come up soon. You're watching the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off at Hamlin University. Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, Visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Mike Peden and Pat Barrett back with you. And Steela Sal and Minnehaha continue to engage in a high caliber non conference game. An early tune up as these two have their sights set for a March date or two. 
26-24 are scored. De La Salle in front. Anisha Scott and Addie Mack both have 10 each. Layla Moses has five off the bench for the Islanders. Amina Allen, she came on late in the first half with eight points, but Pat, I think the story is gonna come down to the foul situation. Johnson and Maester had to go out early with two fouls, didn't play a lot in the first half. If they're not careful, uh, they could find their playing time limited in the second half. I think they dodged a bullet in the first half and Scott really carried them in that first half of play. They did get the good minutes off the bench from Moses. I think they need him on the floor of the second half if they're gonna maintain this lead. There's Maester, her big sister, Nevea. Played at Tartan and Creighton Durham Hall. But Maester and Johnson, part of that Twin Tower core with De La Salle over the last few years. A fantastic game here at the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off. Jordan Johnson with the layup. More of a bunny, I should say, but a three-point play chance nonetheless, and that is why she's got to stay on the floor. If their posts are able to stay on the floor, they're too physical inside. I really think Jordan Johnson is a difference maker. She's got positioning and strength that Mini Haha maybe doesn't have right now. Allen steps into the three. Bullseye. Mini Ha, okay, they may not have size, but as Amina Allen just showed, they've got sharpshooters. She's given him some good punch from her position. Already got nine, I believe, in the game, or 11. Jordan Johnson gets the roll. Well, Jordan Johnson. Already with a couple of buckets here. For De La Salle in the early going. She times the pass and swipes it. She's got Scott up and in. Pat, I don't think you could find a more clear example of an impact player like Jordan Johnson here in this first minute or two. I just think athletically, if they keep those posts on the floor, they're a little too athletic, I think, for Minnehaha. A little too strong, a little too quick. Johnson with two buckets. A steal and an assist to Scott. Long three. Guess who? No layup, but free throws coming. And it's Jordan Johnson once again. She's just too tall. physical inside, Mike, for them. The 6'2 junior. I'm starting to agree with you. I think opponents were spreading some silly rumors hoping... I would fall for it, but that's why we have a network of people. <laughs> I remember telling Eric, I think I need to speak with you a little more often. You were on top of it. But Jordan Johnson, she's a year younger than everyone else is in her class. She skipped a grade. A young, talented prodigy, though. And like you were saying earlier, oh my goodness, Maester got the rebound. I think Johnson would like a few more free throws, but Mack to Allen, Beautiful. back door, yes. And She's Amina Allen keeping Mini Haha in this game. Bet if you'd have told the coach she'll have 13 early second half, he'd have been pretty happy. And it's worth remembering as we have a scramble. <laughs> Foul on De La Salle. It's worth remembering, Pat, I say this a lot. Yes, we come here to watch the headliners, Addie Mack and Anisha Scott, or Madden Greenway at Providence, or Liv McGill at Hopkins, but you can't win this sport alone. No. And Allen, a capable role player. Again, she made the most of her expanded minutes a year ago. Maybe she doesn't get the attention that Mac does. But when you can get help, it goes a long way. STMA, for example, in the win over Eastridge 
They did it by committee between Jaquela Kraft, Kale Jonke, There was and a Eddie time Hasselton. maybe you could have won with one or two players. You're not going to do it at the high level anymore. Nine to shoot. I'll follow on that point in a moment. Here's Hattie Mack on the corner three. It's short. Two A comes to mind because you remember 10 years ago or so, Rebecca Dahlman at Bram and Carly Wagner at New Richland, HEG. 2013, Carly Wagner basically won it by herself in terms of scoring. Here's Jordan Johnson. Out muscling Grieven Hagen. Wubba, 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 woo, woo, woo. She's in beast mode inside right now. I didn't like sitting most of that first half. I've beaten this point repeatedly, but to anyone out there who suggested she wasn't coming back to basketball, she's back. You're a fool. <laughs> you, you are a big time fool. Well, hey, Olivia Olson came back to soccer and look what happened there. I always say the best kids should be playing multiple sports. It's just better <laughs> for them all around. Jordan Johnson up to 11 points, seven in the second half. De La Salle up by six. How did Angel Hill scoop that in? That is a tough degree of difficulty for your first field goal, but you'll take it. Any way you can get him. As long as it goes in, it doesn't matter how. Traveling violation. So Tubbs has already gone to the bench with four falls for De La Salle. Again, Johnson, I think, only has two. Meester has three. So that, that's going to dictate a lot of this game, I really think. They can stay on the floor. You can see physically they dominate the inside. Well, so far, Johnson avoiding that foul trouble that sidelined her for most of the first half. Angel Hill... Another step, another finish. No matter which Hill sister it is, anytime you leave a lane open, there's a good chance they'll drive through it. They only had four and two in the first half, so they need them here in the second half. They're gonna win this ball game. Jordan Johnson all over the boards. It will be a dead ball rebound to Minnehaha, but Pat, if Minnehaha can't find a way to contain Jordan Johnson, De La Salle could very well hang on to this one. Said they have the inside play if they can keep them on the floor. And they've got the advantage big time down low, but it's only a two point game. And First Amina zone Hamlet. we've seen tonight, Mike. Not often we see it, but they do happen. Addie Mack will try to snap out of it with the three pointer and she connects. That's her second, th or yes, yeah, second three. The question came up in our discussion the other day, will we see more zones because of the shot clock? Obviously knowing where the likes of Addie Mack would be, will you see more zones to try and take away the best players? A little bit of angst there. Minnehaha fans thought there should have been a foul on Scott. Instead, Mack got called for the blocking foul. I think you're going to see more zones to try and slow the game down and make people use more of the shot clock. Again, with an awareness of where the best players are. Can we double team a likes of Jordan Johnson down in the post, make somebody else beat us? Will we double team and know where Addie Mack is anytime she cuts through the offense to take her away? It looks It'll be like interesting Scott. to see the strategies. Sorry to jump on you, but okay. it looks like Scott, and I wanted to because I think she might have blood on the jersey. So she has to check out. Well, maybe not blood, but maybe not looking fully focused. Okay, it is. So she's got to clean that up before she can get back out there. A foul. No out of bounds. Step back to set herself to shoot. Okay. A little tougher to see on the near corner, and I'm having to reach over a bit, but that's all right. So Scott, she's just got to get cleaned up and she'll be able to return. That is a safety precaution. So De La Salle for the time being without their primary point guard. 
It's the first time they've trailed in a long time. 36-35. That three by Mack giving Minnehaha the lead. She lines it up again. Close but no cigar. Sine Hill, no reverse. Jordan Johnson, she's not fooling around with those rebounds. Another foul on Mack. And that is her second, if that's on Addy. Her second team fifth already here with 12.30 to go. I might have picked up something from you, Pat. It can be tricky sometimes to follow the fouls, but places like this that don't put them on the board. I keep I my own one. sheet. I, just, I might have to borrow it. Yeah. And there are people who ask me as Taylor Sarks goes to the line. I've had people ask me how I can keep track of the point totals, and, well, as you can see here, I keep a score sheet with me. I typically do the PA and help my scorekeepers at Fridley, so I've just gotten in the habit of doing it to help them. Jordan Johnson in the habit of cleaning up, but she cannot get the baseline jumper, and look out, you know what's coming. Addie Mack, you give her a lane, you give her a step, it's going in, Jordan Johnson. Taking the skip pass in for two. I've got to believe they've gone to this zone to protect their inside players some. Take away some of the driving lanes that Minnehaha was getting. I think they're willing to give up a little bit of three-point opportunities maybe if they can keep those kids on the floor because offensively they're dominating at the other end. Angel Hill. Oh, my goodness. That was... Just about Caitlin Clark range. That was deep. I've never seen her go that deep before. Maester. Oh, nice bounce pass underneath. 41-40, Minnehaha up, and Angel Hill drops another three. Injuries might have affected this, Pat, but I feel like Angel maybe doesn't get as much recognition compared to her older sisters, but she's coming up big now. Addie Mack. Oh. Sometimes I ride the wave of fans' energy <laughs> like that, and you want to see them do well. Sure. Ariana Maester gets the baseline J. And to clarify, well, most of you know this. You follow me on TSB, NSPN, wherever I'm at. The station changes by the day, but I don't root for any one team over another. I want to see them do well, so when you hear me <laughs> react that way, it's because I'm like, ah, shucks. I just love a good game. It doesn't <laughs> matter to me. I want a good game. Play no favorites. Going back to Angel Hill there, a couple of threes and almost had the transition dime. I feel like maybe she doesn't get as much recognition as Taylor, Jade, or Morgan did, and they all were exceptional athletes. And that's not to say Angel isn't good. We know she's a capable playmaker herself, but to go on this kind of run, it's helping Minnehaha, and this back-and-forth seesaw battle continues. This is what we expected coming in. Two good young teams going at it. Some missed shots, some missed layups, some turnovers, but really it's been a great basketball game on both ends. Well, not even Caitlin Clark is perfect, or Hioka. And it happens even in the pros. I was a... If you watched the Timberwolves last night, you know that. Hey, well, when you play 82 games, you're going to have some fluctuation. Not even 26 <laughs> in a regular season for high school now. That's a lot of games in a short amount of time. Absolutely. It is a long season. I think basketball and hockey are the longest. It's the Minnesota winters that make them feel so long. Right. But the regular season goes for about three months compared to football, volleyball, with shorter schedules. Addie Mack tried to set up for three as we come out of the timeout in a two-point contest. I'm certain Coach Fassett said, you've got to find those kids out on the perimeter. Did a good job that time. Maddie Blaylark finds a space underneath. That's just her second field goal. A little crazy to think, but... It's early season still. Right, well, and again, 
ebb and flow of basketball. Sometimes you're going to have big nights, other times maybe not. Angel Hill, well, that's what you're talking about. Foul before the shot, but you saw McNeil go out to Angel at the key. Going off what you're saying, Patch, he hit a couple threes, and now De La Salle has to pay attention. Have to start stepping out on her and Addie Mack. You can't afford to trade two for three. But in doing so, even though Angel was fouled before the drive, when you have to close out like that, that can't open up those driving lanes. That's what you have to figure out. Where is it going to be worth it? Who do we have to worry about that's going to get into the inside? And what and do you have to worry about? she's got it, obviously. Tie so, up. Like Addie Mack, you have to be cognizant because she can beat you just about anywhere. We know I, Angel is a solid slasher. That's what's given De La Salle problems is the slashing. I mean, you know they can shoot too, but the slashing got him in fall trouble in the first half. And that may be explaining the zone formation they have used since then as Addie Mack's shot isn't there. Issa Griefenhagen, nobody on her. Her first field goal. I think the zone move was good because it's protecting their big kids inside. Now they have to make the adjustments to take away not only the three, but the slash out of it. Again, it's early season, so that zone will get better as the year goes on. And that's why you schedule games like this, like Providence, Dowling Catholic yesterday. If you think you have a chance to get to the state and maybe win it, you want to play everyone you can find. I know I looked at Alexandria's schedule, they and they're another here. one in 3A. They're playing everybody, and they should, because they have a chance, the, the talent, to win the state if everything goes right. Griefenhagen with a little backdoor slip to Angel Hill. And Angel's got 14. Minnehaha with their largest lead of the game. Anisha Scott. Can't hit the pull up, look who's there. Jordan Johnson, 13 second half points. Again, limited playing time in the first half. But she is making these minutes matter here in the second half. They've gone back person to person now. Addy kicks out, Allen for three, long. Angel. Ooh. For a moment, I thought Scott had a clean block, and then the contact came in afterwards. Following through on the block is never a good idea. Following through on your shot is a different story. <laughs> Much different. <laughs> Angel Hill at the line. Angel having a solid game, and remember, she didn't get a whole lot of action last year because of the injuries she was dealing with. So she really didn't get a chance to showcase who she is. It's amazing over time. We were talking before the game about UConn, and I think Fudd and Beckers have played 16 total games together in their careers now, but Becker's already a senior. You know, and Fudd's a year behind her, but now she's going to miss the whole season. Again. I, I, it's always my worry when you're a one-sport athlete and you're doing it year-round. I just don't think the body is typically made to hold up. Even the likes of KG in the NBA wasn't going to play the summer stuff anymore, and LeBron has made the same choices other than the Olympic years because it's just too much. Angel draws the foul on the take. Back to the line she goes. And, and to be clear, freak things can happen. Nia Holloway comes to mind. She was a track and basketball athlete. And stuff happens uh, from time to time. But again, I agree with you on the multi-sport part of it. And then Paige Beckers in an ESPN story also noted, maybe I came back too soon after the yeah. knee injury. And she talked differently about how she was eating and about how she was training. I read the article last week. It's a great article if you haven't read it. But it talks about what you need to do if you're truly committed to giving yourself the best chance to stay healthy. Because the game is physical now. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, if you're going to play that much, 
your body has to be ready for it. Addy Mack completes the transition play. Pat Minnehaha up by six. They have taken control of the tempo of the game. They are really dictating the play right now. Blaylark hits the deck. And I've noticed, I know you're keeping track of the fouls, Pat, but I've noticed Jordan Johnson, she's on the bench for now. Wonder if it's to get a breather. It's probably just a breather at this point, but they can't afford to keep her there much longer because she's their money inside. And De La Salle, we thought they might get ahead. Anisha Scott looking for the three, and it comes up short. We thought they might have the advantage with the interior play, but Minnehaha, it was a three-point stroke earlier. Now it's the driving game. Angel Hill for three, not that time. The, the pace has really gone Minnehaha's way in this second half, that being the third foul now on Mack here in the second half. And that is a player you don't want to see in foul trouble, no matter the time. As a coach, that was the thing I wanted most. I wanted the game played at my tempo. As long as that was happening, good or bad, I knew good things would happen in the long run. If you control the tempo to the way your team wants and is comfortable playing the game. 6.40 and counting. Meister. That was a badly needed three for Dylan Tubbs and De La Salle. Amina Allen on the other end. Oh, that lips out. And then a foul. Minnehaha out of fouls to give here. The clock, there we go. <laughs> and yes, I know it's a close game, Pat, but that tub three, I think if De La Salle comes away with another empty possession, then the mental aspect starts to creep in. Again, the safe thing now is you got the shot clock, so you don't have to come out and chase people when you're behind in a game. And that's the piece I like, especially on a bigger floor. I always hated in a good game, which this has been, now all of a sudden with five minutes left, somebody standing out at the jump circle Stalling. holding the ball. I read the previews. I got my breakdown book in the mail yesterday, Kevin Anderson, and we followed up on this. It will be a huge change at the end of games. You're not going to see the free throw parades. You're going to see... Well, you're going to see a foul on De La Salle. They had two to give. But you're not going to see the foul fest that we were accustomed to seeing with time winding down. And that's the fifth foul on... Dylan Tubbs. Tubbs. So her day is done with seven. Remember that bench talk you were referring to? It might come into play here. But earlier today, yesterday, we've seen the end of games go a lot more smoothly now. You're not seeing those foul fests. Teams are playing for the clock, trying to get that stop. And it seems ironic, but it makes sense. It just makes for a cleaner game, I think. You get to see more basketball played. Allen had a couple of cracks at it, nothing doing. Johnson back in the ball game, of force inside again. And Layla Moses lays it in. She's got seven off the bench. And everyone bringing the noise. De La Salle, their bench has been energetic throughout this second half. Oh! Angel Hill throws it away. 5.14 to go. It feels like there's more time left than we have <laughs> the way this game has unfolded. The ebb and flow. A classic rivalry game. And free throws coming for Anisha Scott. Since they've gone back to the person-in-person -person defense, De La Salle has gotten back control of the game as far as the tempo. And that is the fourth personal foul on Sine Hill. Elisal moving back to section 438 this year. Likes to watch movies in her free time. All state honorable mention. 
They've got the lead back. We'll see what happens now. How will Minnehaha respond? De La Salle was struggling a bit at the free throw line. Anisha Scott almost picked Addie Mack's pocket and then a foul. That's not what you want to see. That's her third now. And with 16. De La Salle, well, they, they'll, they had one to give. Yeah, it's not bonus yet. That the was their sixth. Yes. <laughs> That happens too. Remember, it's the opening weekend of the season. There was some confusion with the foul tally in some earlier games. Everyone's getting their legs under them. Even me, I'm not perfect. It's still Hard early. Believe, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's still mini ha ha ball. And De La Salle out of fouls to give now. Angel Hill flips it in one more time. Angel's got 16 second half points. She didn't have a single field goal in the first half. She's been aggressive taking the ball to the basket. They've got to force her left because she's cleaning up right-handed. Another pile up. Jump ball. I think it goes to De La Salle. Four sixteen. Watching this, you do wish uh, they would have this as part of a rivalry game. And De La Salle's in a couple of them with Benil St. Margaret's and Creighton Durham Hall, which helps with scheduling. But this atmosphere, this game, it's great that Hamlin's hosting it. De La Salle will have 14 to shoot. But I feel like this deserves to be part of that boys-girls rivalry doubleheader. Those are the most fun. Those double header nights are my favorite nights going to somebody's gym. Because it's the few nights that boys and girls get to watch each other. Here comes a three for Blaylark, and she's pure. She hasn't scored a ton, but that's another big bucket for the youngster, the sophomore. Mack used up the dribble. Timeout, Minnehaha. Five, I should say 3.34 to go, two point game. You were talking the fun of those double header nights, Mike. Back in the 80s and early 90s, they scheduled games in the Metro and most conferences Tuesday, Friday, Thursday. So if the boys played Tuesday, Friday, girls play Thursday and occasional Saturday. They'd flip-flop the next week. So boys and girls got to watch each other. Now almost consistently, basketball is Tuesday and Friday night at opposite sites. So you never get those fun nights unless it's a doubleheader. And that's why I like these invitationals that offer matchups like this. Pat, De La Salle up by two with that last three-pointer by Blaylark. And Jordan Johnson, again, responding brilliantly in the second half. Angel Hill with a great second half surge of her own. What will this game come down to with 3.34 to go? You know, the best kids step up at this time and make the plays. You can see right now, the defensive deal of Sal has taken back the lead. They had to go to the zone. I think it was a great move by Coach Bassett because it protected their best players and kept them in the game. So now they're in the game, not in serious foul trouble. They got the lead. Now they can go back to the pressure game, which they really like to put on. That's where they can take advantage of their athleticism. And they've taken the lead back with that athleticism on the defensive end has caused the plays that led to offense. All right, both teams out of fouls to give. De La Salle with a two-point lead. Minnehaha holds the arrow. Both teams still in the one and one range. Remember, that's still a thing here in Minnesota. Angel walked. Took away her right hand. That's the difference. We're saying, if you let her go right, she's going to kill you. If you make her go back left, at least you got a chance to turn her back into someone. And that's what they did and got the turnover. 
But I'd argue look, even at the NBA level, if you take away the strong hand, you got a lot better chance stopping right. those guys. It may not always work, but you're right. Give yourself that opportunity. That's all you're looking for. Count it. Layla Moses. The 5'9 freshman, Pat. It's a small sample size, but seeing what Layla has been able to do in a close, tight battle, this could be the kind of performance that helps her earn a few more minutes or makes her one of those first off the bench. We talked about the bench play and how important it might be in this game, and she's had some big buckets for him tonight. Missed the free throw, though. That is the one Achilles heel for De La Salle, 7 of 13. Minnehaha, 9 of 12, if you're wondering. And it's a four-point game. Mack hasn't touched it in a while in a scoring position, so they got to be running something for her now. Addie lives for moments like this. She has accomplished a lot. Has yet to win a state title, though. Addie. Now, that's an interesting timeout call there. They're going to have just five seconds to shoot. They weren't going to get anything good out of that possession before he called the timeout. So we'll see what he can set up. It's on the side. It would have been nice to could have got below the free throw line. Then you get the ball underneath the basket where most teams have some quick go-to plays down there. Off the side, we'll see what they come up with. Often a good one, especially when you're short on time, is to get it right down into the block to the post. Then you can kick it out to your shooter if you need to. Still have enough time with five seconds to get a shot. And going back to that slashing ability of Minnehaha, is that something they look to do here? Five seconds isn't a lot of time, but for someone like Addy or Angel, that's more than enough to make a quick strike. If you can get them coming off a screen or two and get them a little bit of space, then you've got the shot or the chance to turn the corner and go to the basket. Again, Jordan Johnson's down there waiting for him. That's true, and Jordan Johnson avoiding the foul trouble that plagued her in the first half, switching to zone, like you said, protected her, but look what it's done. She has 13 second half points and playing a big part in De La Salle's bid to go to 2-0. and This is where if you've got a good passing big person, you might want him out of bounds. It would take her away from the basket. Right now they've got her out at the three point line defending someone, so. Coincidentally. And that's what it was, that's how it worked. It worked ideally. They brought their post, took Johnson out of the lane, having a garter, and ran the back cut to the basket. It's just the second on Moses. And it's a shooting foul, so two free throws automatically. But coincidentally, Pat, I know it's not, not that long ago, but the last time these two won state, they won it in the same year. Minnehaha and De La Salle both claiming it in 2019. Minnehaha 2A, De La Salle 3A. They're both very good. I'd be willing to bet a little bit of money that they're not going to win in the same year for a while. <laughs> well, you got to deal with Providence at the 2A level in 3A. 3A's got a lot Olivia of good Olsen's teams too. For one more year. But Angel Hill makes it a two-point game after those free throws. Here comes Scott. Rebound, Allen. Minnehaha can tire take the lead. Grief and Hagen. Oh! Now that was heavy contact, but Blaylark, I didn't catch it right away. She may have been the in the restricted zone. It's very possible she was in there and then it doesn't matter. They changed that at the college level now so that a defender can get one as long as they're not underneath the basket. So Issa Griefenhagen goes to the line. She and Sine Hill are dancing partners. <laughs> they shared a few dances together on the soccer team during pregame warm-ups, and her nickname is Hulk, which she got from her trainer, <laughs> who referenced her as Baby Hulk. And she's not a small kid. Nope, she's 0 for 3 from the line right now, so looks like a good foul at this point. Oh for 4 now, but Angel Hill got the rebound. Maybe not enough on that one. Tie up, Minnie Haha with the arrow. Mini -ha -ha. 
And they'll get a fresh 20. Remember, it resets to 20. Not 35 as it had been in the past when it was used on an as-needed basis, I guess is the best way of putting it, or an uh, optional basis. Uh, option. There we optional, go, optional. Yep. I like the 20, I better than the 35. Angel Hill again too far underneath, and Jordan Johnson gets the rebound. Now here's where you're talking about end of games. De La Salle can't lay back. They got to still got to run your offense. Right. Now. They can't sit back and wait for a foul. Run out time. They got to play smart. Anisha Scott got her own miss. Jordan Johnson close. Addie Mack gets the steal. Minnehaha couldn't box out properly, but Addie Mack giving Minnehaha another chance. Now Scott's all over her. And another timeout. Good timeout. For Minnehaha. If you go below the free throw line and you're not along the lane line, you're in big trouble against a good defensive team. So that was a great timeout because she had nowhere to go with the ball. 128 left. <laughs> You and I were on hand for a photo finish last night with Providence and Dowling Catholic. I don't know if this matchup draws the same anticipation, but we are getting quite an exclamation from two perennials in 2A and 3A. These are two very good teams in our state. There's no <laughs> doubt about it traditionally, and it's been everything we hoped it would be. It's been a great back and forth game. Both teams have had the lead. And what has impressed me the most, they've done it with all the changes that come about with coaching moves, Matt Pryor stepping down, Damian Lohler coming in for many ha ha. James Fassett came in for De La Salle after there was some skirmishes there, taking over for Tanisha Scott who built up that program. You wonder how will they move forward? They look uh, pretty good here. Both coaches are doing a good job. Ultimately, both teams got players. <laughs> and that certainly helps. Addie has done a lot of work with Damian Lohler. Mack got the three. Addy Mack with 20. She said she wanted to be like Paige Beckers when she was a seventh grader. Scott loses Mack, but can't hit the three. Rebound Hill, but she's in a lot of trouble. Jump ball, De La Salle with the arrow. Goes to De La Salle. 55 seconds left. And we still have another game left on this evening slate. 30 time second out, timeout for De La Salle. 55.3, 59.58. This is one of those games where Alex told me this last night. I think I could repeat his point. This game feels like a win for the sport of girls basketball with all of the moves and counter moves we've seen. This is the fun of these tournaments, is pairing good teams together. This is what you hope for, and this is what both teams want. This is why you schedule these kind of non-conference games, because they bring out the best of you, and if you're weak in a certain area, it'll get exposed in these games, and then you can go back and work on it at practice. Say, if we're gonna get to where we wanna get, this is where we need to get better. I've always said a clue you can find to gauge the confidence level of teams, how they schedule non-conference. The teams that think they have a shot, they take it. They take their chances. You'd rather find out in November than in February or March. Anisha Scott, not there. Jordan Johnson, oh. She has been brilliant on the boards, but having a little trouble finishing here. Now Minnehaha cannot hold it for the last shot or run out the clock. They've got to run a play. 10 second differential, so they should get the ball back if they come up with a stop with enough time to get a chance to get the winning basket. Addy harassed by Scott, looking for Allen, throws it away. Scott with the steal. Maester on the move, couldn't handle it. 17.9. Great hustle back by Sine Hill there, making the defensive play. There's the timeout for De La Salle. I saw it coming. All right, Pat, 17.9. How do you handle this? 
Do you wait for the last shot? Do you try to go in with a few seconds left? What do you do if you're De La Salle? You're looking for the, the score. You're not going to play it down in a one-point game. Tie game, different story. You're behind. You're taking the first great shot, and I'd be shocked if it isn't going into Johnson somehow inside. Johnson with 17 points, and Minnehaha has the possession arrow if there's a tie-up, so keep that in mind. And both teams in the penalty. Minnehaha, their next foul would be double bonus. So that's something else to consider. I'm thinking of football, you know, when you hear the phrase, oh, did they leave too much time? I guess I'm of the nature that there's never such a thing as leaving too much time. You gotta get a score. First objective, get the lead. Second objective, yeah. get a stop. You can't get point A, you can't reach point B without point A. You, you gotta get the lead. You know, maybe if I'm a great underdog, maybe I play for the last second shot, but otherwise I need to score <laughs> as quick as possible. I don't think we have underdogs here. No. We've got two teams who make state every year. They've been at the top, they hope to get back there. Blaylark to inbound. Scott, side fade, three, short. And we'll do this again. I think you had Johnson coming down the lane one on one. That's where I would have gone with the ball. I know, I know your guard Scott is outstanding, but you had her waltzing down the lane. Inside, she's got position right now. Scott takes it herself. Now you've got a foul. It reminds me, Pat, a couple years ago, Arizona Stanford NCAA championship when Ari McDonald tried to take it in herself against heavy coverage when she had a couple of teammates open. I don't know if Jordan had good positioning there, for example, but Scott, the side fade wasn't a bad shot. That drive against traffic, that was a tougher one. They're playing person to person. Both, both those possessions, she slid down in the block. There's no way that girl's going to handle her one on one. Now, Minnehaha cannot make this a two possession game. Here's the question Do you try and make this or do you miss it? Because <laughs> when you make, now he can call a timeout. You've got a chance to set up a play, throw the ball down the court. Now he had the timeout, so having the timeout, then I'm gonna try and make it. If he had no timeout, it I'd might kind change of miss the it equation. then. I'd change my strategy. Right, if you have the timeout, it doesn't really matter. Right. But in that situation, not that Addy is going to throw free throws like that, but I think it was the right call to make because it gives you the safety net. Now you know you have to defend against the three. Yep, I wouldn't send anyone inside that arc. Right, it's a it's bit like, like you want to throw it down there. It's all yours. Go ahead and score. Beat the point spread, maybe. <laughs> a bit like those Hail Marys at the end of football games. All you got to do is make sure you don't give up a pick six that goes yep. for 99 yards, which happened yesterday in the Dolphins-Jets game. So do you put somebody on the ball here, or do you put them back there, double teaming one of the three-point shooters? Many odd. They're not putting anyone on the There's no way she's going to be able to get down in the play for a good three-point shot. Nobody's on Blaylark. They're laying back. Oh, that's not going to work. And Minnehaha gets out of here with a gritty 61-58 win. Pat, what more can you say? It was a fantastic game featuring fantastic performances from the big-name players. It's what we were hoping for. It was a wonderful early season game. Really, both teams played very well. And we're on a quick out here for this game because it did run long at the end. Lakeville South and Minnetonka to follow, but we'll recap it quickly. Angel Hill with 20, Addie Mack 22 to lead everyone. Amina Allen with 13, Jordan Johnson 17, Anisha Scott with 14 to lead De La Salle. But we've got one more game left. It's Lakeville South and Minnetonka. Always a treat to see a Brian Cosgriff led team. Can't wait. Well, you won't have to wait long as our coverage of the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off continues.